Welcome to my shop once more. This is Sam in Wyoming. Today's topic, I'm going to do a natural edge turning. I'm going to turn a natural edge or a bark edge bowl. And ordinarily what I do with those pieces is I green turn them. I finish them from the very beginning when it's wet. But to keep with the theme of this series of videos, I'm going to rough turn this natural edge bowl. Now, a couple bookkeeping items I need to address. The fan funding button has been taken away from our videos. And just to let you know, I appreciate anybody who has donated a little money. And uh, that's really exciting to get 25 bucks or five bucks from somebody who thinks enough of my videos. I appreciate that. However, it's no longer there. The other thing that YouTube has taken away, which really, really uh, is really kind of tough for me as a YouTuber, is they're taking away the annotations. So in the middle of a video, if I want to make a comment about something or correct something I've done or add something, I can't do that. They're uh, speech bubbles, they're little notes that you put on there. So I have to be careful and put those in when I'm editing it on my program before I put it up to, to YouTube. So anyway, a couple things there. Now, let's get into the uh, topic at hand. I'm going to readjust my camera and I'll show you the piece that I'm going to be working on today. All right, you are looking at my log, my bowl blank for a natural edge project. Let's measure this up. And I'm kind of bound by the smallest dimension. So looking at this right here, I'm, I'm about nine and a half inches. Go in this direction. I'm almost 14. So you just saw me mill this piece of wood. I cut the ends of this log off and they're not going to appear in the final piece. So I'm taking a poster board round template, 10 inches, and I'm going to just make a mark. I'm going to find a place where I want to put this. Now, something we might do is look at the underside of this and that might be a good indication of where we want to put this. You can see that there's some nice ripple figure along here. This is the pith and I'm afraid it's already cracking. You can you can see that splitting right here. I could probably just wedge that out of there. So we want to get rid of that. So that's not going to be a big factor as far as uh, feature in the wood. So let's turn this back over. I'll turn this back over. Now I'm going to just put my template here. Look at the ends and the ends are really good. There's no cracking in there because I just cut that yesterday. I'm going to just go in here with my scratch all and make a mark. There we go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right where I made that center point. This is just a set of drill bits that uh, I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, the name on these particular bits is a speed bore, and I've heard them uh, described in different ways. Anyway, it's nice to have that option in your shop. Uh, they're not great for doing any kind of fine drilling or anything. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take an inch and a half drill bit and I'm going to drill this right through the bark now you are looking at the top side of my bowl this is going to be the top, the inside is going to be uh, dished out, of course in a bowl shape, and it's sitting on the bottom. It's just opposite of a normal, ordinary bowl that we might turn. Now I'm going to put this back in here, put my, uh, I'm going to put my poster board template back in there. And I'm going to take this over on my bandsaw. I'm going to cut it out. 
I will uh, forego showing you that using me cut stuff on the bandsaw. Then I will show you the next step. Now I've decided I'm going to put this between centers and I'm going to use a spur drive. This is my biggest spur drive and it's probably an inch and a half which matches my drill bit perfectly and it's just a good idea to take that bark away because that's going to cause you trouble later on. Good idea not to hit this with a, a metal hammer, so I've got a dead blow hammer here, which works really well. So that's going to be the inside of my bowl. I'm going to put that towards my headstock like that. And possibly in this camera, you can see it's a little bit uneven. Or I should say it's out of balance. This face here and this is not parallel. So that's a big reason for putting it between centers. And I'll show you that in just a second. Now I've decided I'm going to do four videos in this series. The first one's milling the wood with a chainsaw. The second one is rough turning this particular bowl blank, which is just a normal bowl right here. And what I usually do, these are the same shavings from the initial turning yesterday of this bowl. Very, very wet. So I just put them in there. I put them inside a plastic garbage bag. And this is going to stop the drying process as much as possible. Now in a few days when I get maybe several bowls together, I'll put them in a a lawn bag, a, a paper lawn bag, and the shavings I threw outside are going to be dry enough. They'll be drier than these shavings. So I keep introducing uh, a situation or environment that's going to dry this more and more as I go along. And then eventually I'm going to have this uh, out of the paper bag on a shelf, and it's going to take six or eight months, but I'm in no rush. So let me put my tailstock up and we'll go to the next step. Okay, I have my bowl blank between centers and I've got a spur drive on the headstock. I've got a step center right here and you can tell from this camera angle that here's my high point right here and coming around right here I'm probably two and a half or three inches different so what I have to do is lower this I'm going to just hold that high point right here and just tip my bowl blank a little bit and we'll see I'll just take a pencil and Mark this right here, spin my blank around, and I'm probably still an inch off, so I'm going to lower this a little bit more. So really what I need to do is lower that half that distance. So if it's an inch, I just uh, lower it a little bit in between that. And I'm right on, right here, and right there. And what I like to do is mark right below the bark, which would be the cambium layer. Because the difference in the bark uh, can be, you know, quarter of an inch, half an inch. So you have to be careful about that. Anyway, I'm going to tighten this up. And the bottom part of this bowl right here now is really, really off. So I have a hard time when I'm using my chainsaw to get that uh, cut where it should be. It's pretty flat, but it's just at an angle. So I'm going to turn my uh, tool rest around. 
and do a little bit of turning, the first thing I'm going to do is level off this, this edge. I'll take a little bit better marker here and I gotta take all that away down to this point. Alright, now as I actually get into a bit of turning here, I need to be very clear about something. I could have started this uh, natural edge bowl with a faceplate. I could have started it with a screw chuck. Uh, I chose to do it with a spur drive because that allows me to adjust this high and low points on there. Now right now I've done the high points. Eventually when I get this turned around to here, which is going to be a low point, I need to also check that and I'll double check that later on. So I'm going to get ready here and turn my, turn my lathe on. Now I've got the speed turned all the way down. I don't need to be turning real fast right now. And I'll bring that up to maybe 400. Well my first order of business is to level off the bottom of this bowl. As you can see it's just out of balance. And I need to level that off and that's not an easy thing to do. One thing, I can't turn my speed very fast at this point because it's so out of balance and that's one of the objectives is once I get this trued up I can speed it up a little bit and that'll make things a little bit easier. I've got the flute on this three quarter inch bowl gouge completely open. It's facing upward. I have my tool handle pretty much horizontal and I'm scraping. But that's about all I can do at this point, and especially with this very hard, dense honey locust wood. That will be a beautiful bowl. Now it's a good idea to check your locking mechanism here and make sure that you're really grabbing into that piece of wood because it's wet and the wood's going to compress. I'm putting a glove on. Be careful with the glove. This wood is not quite as hard as a rock, but it's almost as hard. So, Now as I continue to level off the bottom of this bowl, I'm really trying to get to a point where I'm cutting and not scraping, but you can hear from the sound that it's uh, pretty out of balance and some of the tool work here is really more of a cut and you can kind of see that from the video. And this really will make things a little easier. Alright, we're getting there. Now you can tell this area right here is very punky and I could take my tool and just uh, kind of wedge that out of there. Very soft. It's going to interfere with my spigot when I put my spigot on there. So I'm going to go down a little bit farther. Now from here all the way out to here I've got that trued up. So what I can do from here on is I can just take a nice draw cut and work that down. So it's pretty much of a cut all the way to here and I've got to address this area here a little differently because if I go in this direction as I have been I'll possibly take that bark away Now as I make my way around the bowl up towards the rim, 
my approach is going to change. I'm really concerned about the bark and keeping it on, so at some point I'm going to have to go in the wrong direction, and I'll explain that later. So right here I've got my tool rest readjusted, and I'm just uh, scraping that away. It's still pretty out of balance at this point. And now I'm going in the wrong direction, just to make sure I keep my bark on. Now I'm finally getting my way around the outside of this bowl and I'm doing a couple things that are really not correct. I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm going from here down to the center bottom of the bowl and I should be coming the other direction into supported wood along here. But if I do that I may rip that bark off. So I've just about got that all trued up here, and I'm also going into end grain a bit. Here's the end grain, here's the end grain right here. So just uh, taking some very nice light cuts on that, and I'm going to keep working. I've just about got that down. And then what I'm going to do is check my low point and my high point, make sure they're all where they should be. And I am also turning my speed up a little bit to about 640. Now I need to check to see if my high points and my low points are where I want them to be. I'll first look at the high point there, there. Okay, that's one high point, and here's the other one. Um, they're very close. I could probably adjust this maybe an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure if it's worth it. Let's take a look at the low point right here. I just have my marker resting on my tool rest, and I might just go all the way around with this. Now I'm using a Sharpie, and I need to make sure this will come off later on, so um, I'm right below. This is the cambium layer, which is very, very soft. It's that area between the wood and the bark. It's where the tree actually grows. It grows in in this direction and makes wood. It grows in that direction and makes bark. All right, TMI. Anyway, um, there's my low point. There's my low point. I would say they're just about as close to being perfect as possible. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to readjust anything. If they were way off, I would simply take that, loosen up my tailstock, and do some adjusting. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is work on a tenon down here. And I'm going to make this to fit my large Vicmark chuck. Now, what I'm going to use for my chuck is this uh, Vicmark setup here. This is the Pickmark 120 uh, chuck body, and I've got some 5 inch jaws, and I've got the dimension marked on these dividers that I want. So let me just find a place that is going to be close. And I'm going to just take my pencil, and that's about where I want to be. Right there, and we'll see how close I am. Um, right on, I'm right on the money.
Now I have that spigot pretty well established. I suspect I'm about uh, a strong quarter of an inch in in depth and that's really all I need. I'm going to fine-tune this with my uh, detail gouge and this is probably a Cindy Drozda detail gouge. So the next step, I'm going to have this reversed into my chuck and we'll do a little bit more work on the outside of this and get that final shape going. Well this is actually the next day and I decided to take a little break from turning and I wanted to preserve this piece of wood so it wouldn't crack or split. So what I did was I put it in a little garbage bag and I literally filled it with water. That's right. I literally soak that wood. It's not going to hurt anything and it's pretty much going to prevent that from drying out and splitting. And I'll put it back on the lathe and we'll continue with the project. I am to the point in this project that I'm going to uh, put my bowl blank into my large Vicmark chuck. There's the spigot. We'll tighten that down. So it is time to do the inside of this bowl. And keep in mind, I'm rough turning this. Now I did a little work yesterday on the outside and I've got some ridges in here that it's a good idea to work on this part of my bowl and clean it up and get it to the point where it's trued up and round. And then I can turn the speed up because that's important when I do the inside of this bowl. You saw in that first clip I had this literally soaking in water overnight. Uh, and that's the best way to keep this from cracking and just stop and slow down that drying process. So let me do a little bit more work on the outside of this bowl. I'm not real happy with that shape anyway, so we need to do something with that. Well, I have this two minute clip sped up quite a bit. And here is the message I would say at this point is, take advantage of the push cut when you can. There's no way I can get in here and do a proper push cut. So I'm just scraping this. It's kind of a draw cut or a draw scrape with my right hand pulling the tool and I'm just taking off as much wood as I can. Okay, I've turned right up to this line right here and I'm into the bark. Now if I continue in this direction, there's a chance I'm going to rip that bark off and uh, mess up my natural edge. So at this point, I'm gonna go in the wrong direction. Right now I've been going in the correct direction from the bottom to the top of this bowl. Now I'm going to start right here. And it's actually uh, flat right here. There's some places where it's not trued up. So I'm going to very carefully go in in this direction, which is really the wrong direction, but uh, that'll help me keep the bark on. Now this is a fairly good shot of me doing a push cut into the bark. And I think part of the key to doing this is a very slow traverse. Spin the bowl as fast as you can, and that'll give you a clean cut. I've got the outside of this uh, rough turn bowl where I want it. I've actually got it fairly smooth. Now, if I were finished turning this bowl, I would have this completely finished to the point of sanding it. Right now, I'm going to address the inside of this bowl. And you pretty much turn this the same way as you do a regular bowl. I'm going to make some entry cuts going in this direction. Well, I highly recommend you trying a natural edge bowl if you've never done that. 
I would get a softer piece of wood. This honey locust is really hard. Get a softer piece of wood, do a smaller bowl, and if you mess it up, you really haven't lost a whole lot, but you'll find out that it's really not that difficult to do. This is gonna be a rough turn bowl. And again, this bowl is right at 10 inches, so my wall thickness needs to be about one inch right in here. So I need to start thinking about stopping the cut right here and then just take the rest of the mass out from the inside. Now I will agree that turning a natural edge bowl is a little bit more complicated than turning a bowl in the regular orientation. But it's not all that scary and really is not all that difficult. Uh, just find a softer piece of wood to practice on. Make a little bit smaller bowl. It's really easy once you get the hang of uh, dealing with that bark and cutting through that bark. And for me, that requires a cutting tool with about a 40 degree nose angle. And that allows you to make a pretty good entry cut into the bark. Here I'm using more of a traditional gouge with maybe a 55 degree bevel angle. Now it is time to measure the uh, very bottom of this bowl. Make sure I'm not uh, going to get in trouble. And I'm going to show you a little trick. Uh, I actually saw Cindy Drozda do this. Because of this uneven edge on here, it's difficult to use my uh, depth gauge as I normally would. So I'm going to use my tool rest uh, perpendicular to my bedways, and I'm going to use it to reference the bottom of this. I'm going to lock that in. I've got a little locking mechanism on that that I repurposed, so I'll just keep that in the same place on my tool rest. And I'll look down here and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really good right there. I think I've hit just about as far down as I want to go in the depth of that bowl. Well, as I get towards the final dimension of my wall thickness on this bowl, I'm using my larger bowl gouge with a traditional grind. And I like to use this tool at the very end of a bowl because it gives me time to practice. It's a little bit difficult to use and I need all the practice I can get. Now I'm going to check my wall thickness going down through there. Uh, your fingers really are not the most uh, accurate measuring device. So I'm going to come way out here on the, the top of my bowl right here. And I'm going to go down through there. Right here, right along here, I'm still fairly thick. So I'm going to finish that up and then we're going to put this in some wet shavings and wait six months. Now I'm going to take this series on bowls and put it in my playlist dealing with bowls. And this will be a good documentation going from a log to a finished bowl. Let me make one point here, and, and I go into a lot of detail on my other videos on uh, turning thin bowls and turning natural edge bowls. But doing this looks difficult, but it really isn't all that difficult. And here's why. I've got an intermittent edge on this. So I'm making contact with my tool here. Here I've got air. Now that, that part maybe is the difficult part, but you have this intermittent edge and sometimes when you make an entry cut with a tool you get that uh, skating backwards. Hey, you stop that. And this, because this is an intermittent edge, you don't get that. So all you have to do is hold that tool steady, practice a little bit, use some softer wood than this. This wood is really, really hard. It's old honey locust, but it's beautiful wood and I really, really love it. 
Now, I'll put this away in some shavings. I'm gonna use the same shavings that came from the center of this bowl. I'm gonna wrap this up and, and get it uh, fairly wet and monitor it. So in the next two weeks, a month, I'm gonna really uh, pay close attention to this. If I left it too thick here, it's gonna crack and I'll, and I'll watch that for a month or so. And then I'll put it away more permanently and wait six months or maybe eight months. Now in video number four of this series, I'm gonna complete this bowl. Now this is a bowl, a bowl blank, that was cored. And there's no tenon on this. So I simply cored this out and put it away in shavings. And uh, July of 2016, so it's probably, you know, what, uh, eight months old anyway, been sitting there, it's, it's ready to turn. So thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna put this away in some shavings and uh, yeah, thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time.